Hi, my name is Kaylee, and you're watching the Youth Code Jam um, activity video. And um, today we're going to be going over how to do one of the design activities. So um, your activity sheet might look like mine. It might see litter bug at the top, or um, it might look a little different. Um, but it's okay because, as you'll see, the steps are pretty similar. So I'm just going to go over how to do a design activity in general, and then you can apply what you learn in this video to whichever activity you're working on. Um, so for this activity specifically, um, the top says here that we're going to be working in Scratch. So I have Scratch pulled up on this window over here. Um, and so this wants us to go to scratch.mit.edu slash project slash editor. If you're on this screen, you can also just click the Create button, and that will take you to the same place. And um, so we'll wait for that to load. And um, the cool thing about these design activities is that instead of telling you how to do everything step by step, you're going to have a chance to um, be kind of creative. And the program that you come up with might look different from the program that someone else creates. So we'll finish setting up our scratch window on the right side. And then um, we'll go over what exactly it means that this is a design activity on the left side. So like it says under Let's Get Started, we can close out this tutorial window, the X, and we can get rid of our cat sprite here. And so um, for now, we're not even going to worry about the scratch, the programming. We're going to start with our steps here. So first, we're going to read the program specifications. Um, those are kind of the instructions that tell us what we're trying to code. And so we have our specifications right here. The ones I have say, Make a program that shows a bug cleaning up litter or trash. Your program should show all trash around the ground where the bug lives and get rid of any trash that the bug touches. So my job is to create a program that shows the trash along the ground and make the program get rid of any trash that the bug touches. So that's what I want to do. That's my goal. Step two says next we're going to pseudocode. Um, this is when we're going to plan out by writing things down um, what it is that we want to code with these goals in mind. So when um, when you do pseudocode, when you write stuff out first, it's a lot easier to work with a code or code blocks later. And there are two steps to pseudocoding. First, we're going to list out the setup we need for our program, and then we're going to list out the actions that our program should do. So I'll read it again, but so for this program here, um, we want to make a program that shows a bug cleaning up trash. We're going to show the trash all along the ground and show any trash that the bug touches. So the first step in creating this program is our setup phase of pseudocode. What do we need to add or create before we code? So what do I need to add or create to create this program that's specified up here? I gave one example um, right here. So one example of things we need to set up is will we need to make a bug sprite? We can't make a program with a bug cleaning up litter unless we have a bug. And in Scratch, um, our characters are called sprites. So we need to make a bug sprite for this program to work. Well, what other things do I need to set up? If it's a program about a bug cleaning up trash, I should probably also have some trash in my program. So you can write in the blank um, maybe some trash sprites or a trash sprite. And um, Maybe a background could be part of the setup too. So setup is usually things like your characters or sprites and backgrounds that don't really require coding, but that are the objects and things that are going to move around in the game or whatever program it is you're making. There are lots of different things that you could add during setup. I just gave you some examples there. And the second step to pseudocoding is to list out all of the actions that our program should do. So what are the smaller steps that we need to accomplish to get a program that does these things? So to make a program that shows a bug cleaning up litter, um, we need to show the trash all over the ground and get rid of any trash the bug touches. In order to make that happen, some actions that our program needs to do is it needs to be able to make the bug move, right? Because if the bug is going to be walking around cleaning up trash, the bug needs to be able to move. And so that's a more specific step that can help us accomplish this bigger goal up here. Some other actions for this specific design activity might be um, 
making the program get rid of any trash that the bug touches. So you could write that on this second blank here. Um, you can add other actions as you see fit. Um, those are a couple of examples. So the actions part of our pseudocode are what are the smaller steps that we need to accomplish to create this bigger goal of making a program that shows a bug cleaning up trash. And sometimes the uh, actions will be kind of straightforward and sometimes you might have to think a little more. It's okay if you don't think of everything now. This is kind of like a starting point so that when you're coding, you know what are the different part pieces or parts that I need to code. And so that's step two. You can pause this video if you want a couple more seconds to brainstorm some more setup or action items. I'm gonna go on to step three. And so after you've done, you've read the spe program specifications in step one and you did pseudo coding in step two, step three is implementing or writing the program. And so for this activity, I'll be using Scratch. Um, and I'm not going to um, program it all here in front of you because the point of this isn't for you to just copy what I'm doing, but to figure out how can I make this program my way. Um, and um, kind of like step three says, there are many ways to do this. You should explore and be creative. And um, to test if your program is doing what you want it to do, you can use this green flag button over here periodically. Um, so after you add a couple of code blocks, you could try this out to see if your program is doing what you want it to do. I created a sample program here and I took some screenshots that are um, on the activity sheet that you're looking at. And so um, this is my sample program for this litter bug activity. And so I showed some of my code um, that made it do the steps and the, um, or the actions and the setup that I was talking about earlier. So there's my bug sprite, there's my trash. Um, and here's the code where I make the grasshopper move around. Um, here's the code that makes the trash appear and um, the trash, the, the code that makes the trash disappear when the grasshopper touches it. Again, your code does not need to look exactly like mine. In fact, the whole point of this is for you to make your own unique code. There are a million right ways to do this. So um, don't be frustrated if, um, or upset even if your code looks different or maybe is working a little bit differently. That's a good thing. You can experiment with it as much or as little as you like. And as always, you should share your solutions that you come up with with us. We'd love to see them. I hope that this activity is a lot of fun for you and that you get to exercise some of those creative juices. Um, like I said, you can use this tutorial video of me going through the different steps for any of the design activities like this, not just for Litterbug. Um, and hopefully that will